Guys, can I get a massive clap in the audience for the incredible Ahura? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Set yes, apart, whoa, hear whoa. you scream. Yeah. Bottlings, let me hear you roar. Roar. <laughs> Babes, I just roared on the podcast. I hope you like that. Welcome to the PLT podcast. This is a dream come true. Oh my God, I am buzzing. How are you doing, babes? I'm doing all right, honey. You K-Han. I'm, I'm, I'm K-Han. I'm already, li- I literally feel like everything you say, I'm going to be like, ah, like fangirling over. <laughs> We've already had a little chat before this and I've nearly been in, in tears before. So I am so excited for today. I'm actually not okay. I think that's the answer. I'm not okay because I'm just so excited. <laughs> <laughs> First of all. Lost that. Let's talk about this look, Ahura, because I am obsessed. You're giving me blonde bombshell, the hair, the look. Talk me through everything. What are we serving tonight, honey? We're giving you blonde ambition, girl domination. We've got my big hair. I'm in bed. I'm in my boudoir. I've got the lamps on. I've got my little slit dress on, my cross to pray for Christ. You know, she's a Catholic woman ready to get on her knees and pray to Jesus. She is getting on her knees and praying. And honestly, can I, wow. can I get a gay man up in here? Gay, gay man. man. <laughs> I literally am living for this look and living for this record. And it's literally like three seconds in. Oh, right, thank you so, so much for joining us. I was telling you off air that literally the whole of PLT have been blowing up my phone tonight. Like, oh my God, a whore is on the podcast. Can you get a shout out for me? Can you get her to say hi? Can you tell her to come out in Soho? Yes, Amy Simon, I mean you. Babes. Everybody is obsessed with this. So thank you so, so much for taking time out your busy schedule. Because I know you've had a busy day, right? Oh, she's been manic. Girl on the town, you know, another club, another club, jet plane, another club, bar, sash, another club, PLT podcast. <laughs> and we're ending it with a PLT podcast. Where else would you want to end the sesh, babe? Do you know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> Well, we're going to talk to you a little bit tonight, all about your kind of journey. We're going to do it in true drag race theme. Are you ready for that? Oh, blow me away. No pun intended. (laughs) I am literally obsessed. Okay, so we're going to start at the beginning where we should always start. And that is to racers, start your engines. Woo! Let's take it right back to the beginning, honey. Let's kick things off with your appearance on season two's Drag Race UK. And oh my God, what a season it was. Literally our favorite season. We were obsessed. Tell us everything about Drag Race and kind of how you were when you first found out you were going to be on such an iconic show. I mean, it's one of those things that you you think you can prepare yourself for, but Mm. then you're just so not prepared. Like you get then, it's just a completely different ball game to what you know. Like watching it is a different thing to being there. So um, I don't think anything could have mentally, physically prepared me to one week be in a raps musical, the following week be presenting on Good Morning Glory and then be dressed as Louis Spencer following week and then lip sync for my life. You know what I mean? Like you, you just don't know what's around the corner. So like, I don't think I was ever prepared for season two. And also, I wasn't as prepared for the reaction. It's just been insane. The fans mm. have gone mad. It has been wild. And honestly, like I say, it was our favorite season, such a season. And that's something I wondered, like, how do you prepare for that? Because do you know, like, the challenges you're going to get? Because first of all, it's like, like you say, physically, mentally preparing for these challenges. But also, girl, your wardrobe, like, did you get told, like, what outfits you kind of need? I mean, you get briefed on the runway themes, but you get a very limited time to prepare before you actually leave to go to the show. So... You know, you've got a lot of runways to prepare in a very short amount of days, not even months, it's days. So it's a lot. Uh, It's a lot of money to quickly find when you get the call. Because as soon as you get the call, it's game time. The engines start from that moment. So um, it's a lot. It's a lot to invest. And also it's a lot to risk if, you know, you don't do well. Mm. So you have to try and make sure you give everything. Otherwise, it was a waste of time and money. (laughs) (laughs) I can't even like think how crazy it must be in that moment. Like, what was it like when you got the call? Like, I'd love to say, was it from Rue? Was it from the producers when they call you and like, yeah, Ahura, we want you, babes, come on. I mean, it's the team who call you. I mean, RuPaul's, RuPaul <laughs> watches the auditions and picks you out, apparently. Wow. Um, but um, 
And like, he, he does always reference your auditions as well when he talks to you. So mm. I do I do know he has watched my tape. <laughs> but um, I was at work. I was working in Gucci at the time. So I was just at work. And then I was in the canteen. I got a call. And I was like, who's this random unknown number? I answered it. And it was like, hello, are you alone? And I was like, who's this? He's like, oh, horror congratulations. You're going to drag race. And I was like, ah! Like, the, the staff canteen just like, not mentally prepared. <laughs> And I was just like, what is going on? And then like, it was like, and then it was like, it was like, gave me the time frame. It was like, it starts now. The competition starts now. So I'd literally go to, down to my manager and say, I need annual leave for like two months because I'm going away <laughs> somewhere that I can't tell you about, but it's a Wait, big deal. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I've got to just disappear. Like, I've got to get rid of my phone and I can't talk to anyone and I'm going to be gone. So bye. And that was it. So. Oh my it was a God. Lot. I didn't. I didn't even think about the fact that you literally say to like your your work, like what you're doing at the time, like, you know, I need to take annual leave. And did you even think like, am I even ever going to be going back? Well, that's the thing. Um, I went on annual leave, but obviously when we filmed the show, we broke into lockdown. Of course. So yeah. when I had to come back and then go back to work, I wasn't able to go back to work because because I was on annual leave until the store actually fully opened. I wasn't even allowed to go on furlough. So all of lockdown, I actually had no money and no no job, nothing. But I wasn't able to like also like leave my job because I was still classed as annual leave. Yeah. So I had to resume back to it to then leave if I wanted to. So I didn't know when I was going to be returning. Babes, but you're on RuPaul's Drag Race, so nothing else matters, yeah. honey. And you were killing it. You were absolutely killing it. Something we noticed on the show was some of your PLT looks. And oh my God, they oh, were yes. some great looks. Wait, the Molly Mae Blue Blazer. Talk to me about that. I think that was when you re-entered after lockdown, wasn't it? Yeah, so I got a few looks together like so I thought you know what I want to ch- I judge it up a bit I always wore mm. PLT more as a boy anyway than drag which was weird um but yeah I, had, I just put some stuff together I had like a cute like grey coat that I'd put together I had the blazer I was wearing the shoes everything like I just like it just I don't know like the blue blazer I just I saw Molly <sighs> Mae in it and I was obsessed when I saw her edit and I was like I need this blazer so I got it but I was actually going to wear it as my executive look for Drag Race. It's like for a challenge, as a presenting challenge. No. But then I thought, you know what? It's so cute. I'll just wear it as a boy as my entrance, re entrance. So I came in and was like, boom, hi, I'm Molly May. <laughs> It was got Molly May has entered the building. It was a Molly gorgeous May. look. And I mean, to be fair, when you went on to do your presenting challenge, that that whole look was a mood as well. I mean, I was obsessed. That was probably one of my favorite challenges, honestly. The, uh, you know about the Essex girl? The Essex girl. Oh, she was there. Yeah, I mean, she that was, was there. a PLT suit as well. Stop, wait, I didn't even know. That, that was a full white PLT tux, yeah. But I've had that like two years. I have that, I've had that years. Oh my God, literally everybody was screaming. I remember when you came in the blue and they were like, Ahor is wearing the Molly May blazer. Like <laughs> yeah. obsessed, absolutely obsessed. So talk to me about your drag. How long have you been working in drag for? Um, before Drag Race, it was a year. Wow, is that um, it? I, yeah. Um, and then after, so now after Drag Race, it's been like two and a half, nearly three. Wow. When I say, is that it's, I mean, I think because obviously like you hear when you are such a successful drag queen in my eyes and everyone's eyes here and you think, you just assume that people have been doing it for so, so long. No, I think I was... It was me and Cherry Valentine who had been doing drag the least amount of time. Wow. I mean, there were people in the show who, who were younger than me who have been mm. doing it, but have been doing it for like five years. But like, wow. I, yeah, I'd only doing it a year before I got cast. So I remember I started doing drag just before the announcement came out that season one was going to start auditioning. <gasps> I thought, and I was like, oh my God, I've only been doing drag three weeks. I can't apply for season one. So I left it a year and I thought, okay, I'll go for season two. I should be ready in a year, maybe try and see if I can just push myself. And I got it straight away, first time. So rock and roll, motherfucker. Oh my (laughs) God, first time. That is such an achievement. Like what were you doing in that year? Like prior to coming on to RuPaul's, like you said, like I'm just going to work really hard. Like what was kind of the plan and what did you do to really get yourself there? I just said to myself, I was like, and you need to do everything and anything this next year to make sure you can get casted. So I was like, reaching out to so many photographers just to like do shoots trying to get my name and try and perform as many mm. clubs as I could trying to host as many parties like hitting editorials or magazines anything I could just to get my name out there a bit more um and in that year I, I managed to get into Vogue Italia Amazing. I managed to do some really major things mm. um, just off my own back but like I was hustling like 
I was probably earning in drag like two hundred pound a month. Not a lot, but like it was just a case of like just do it to get Keep your name grafting. out there. So yeah, I yeah, yeah. Photo shoot for free, for free. Like just learn anything I could do, and then I mean it paid off now. I mean, and look where you are, honey. <laughs> look where she yeah, is. Yeah. So you know the hustle is real, but it's worth the prize. One hundred percent. And something I'm interested to ask. So when you first started out in drag, was she the Ahura we know and love today? I mean, to be honest, I started doing drag in my bedroom and I, I wasn't willing to like post that I was learning or doing it or mm. doing my makeup and stuff until I was fully happy with it and confident with it. So I just waited and waited and waited until I knew I looked great before I announced that I was doing drag. So I came out pretty, pretty anyway. She was a pretty little thing. She was then. a pretty little thing all the way along, honeys. <laughs> so, um, but like all I've just done is then since then, like just keep revamping and like, mm. I would just take photos of myself and whatever I'd be face tuning, I'd then write, okay, so I want this whiter. This needs to be lifted wow. more. These lips need to be bigger. If I'm face tuning <laughs> it, then I need to actually do it. So I just started doing it and here I am now. I feel very content. You, you are, you should be, babe. She's here. She's killing it. We are obsessed. And, she's had, and now that she's uh, on the drag race profile, she gets some free filler, free teeth. <laughs> You know, it's all great now. Honey, it's not £200 a week anymore. No, 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 no. <laughs> the thing is, it's funny because when you do, after drag race, like before drag race, you're like, you have nothing. Mm. But after drag race, you actually have money, you get paid, but you, have, you don't have to pay for anything because everyone gives it you for free. Just keep so racking that up. Just keep, yes, well, that's what we're here <laughs> you're living honey you're living your best life and that's what we love to see you killed it like you completely deserve that you've obviously worked really hard to get where you are thank you I and mean, we love it so you know something i don't want to assume things here or and i know you've spoken a little bit on it on the past but i want to know what is the meaning behind your drag name so there's there's <laughs> like there's two ways. The actual name came from, I was in a real horrible relationship, which is why I do drag. This guy I was with for four years ended it with me because um, I was too feminine, wasn't masculine enough. And at the time I was uh, in fashion school. So I was a club kid. So I'd go out, mm. wear like fishnets and blazers and berets and just be a bit eccentric. But he said that me going out dressing that way was attention seeking and that it would make me a whore. So I was like, what? And then when he actually ended the relationship, he told me it was because I wasn't masculine enough. I was too feminine. So I sat and I thought, well, how can I take this thing that he's using against me as a revenge comeback, like a bounce back, like, you know, mm. after a relationship. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to be <laughs> the biggest whore, but like the whore that you cannot afford, you cannot touch. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, can't you know, stand in the same room on the it. rack and you, you look at it you see the label you think I can't afford that that's what a whore is she's a fashion whore so I created a horror as you call me a whore yes and just became this but yeah but that's the where the name comes from but then mm. my I call it my ethos my brand is very much like you know Aurora from Sleeping Beauty the girl who likes to play with pricks spin on wheels and needs a man to kiss her to wake her up out of bed you know <laughs> Both of them She's a bit like Maleficent as well, a horny <laughs> bitch, you know? Oh, I love, you can't be a bit Maleficent, honestly. I'm living for those stories. I'm absolutely living. Like, I don't think I'd actually heard your first, that first kind of story. Like, that wasn't spoken about in Drag Race, was it? We did speak about it, but they just didn't use it in the they edit. Didn't, in the they end, didn't I use think. it. Well, that's yeah, it. It's so I mean, interesting to see what, what kind of comes out. But I find that so, I'm so glad that you took what could be seen as like a negative situation and gone, big fuck you, because he was obviously an idiot. Like, look what his well, last one is. And I mean, it's a great story for all stars, maybe. You know, yeah. save it for another time. Wait, we're going there already? Are we going there already? <laughs> no, like, honestly, I'm just, I'm going to go there already. The producers are going to kill me. All stars. Like, have you had the call yet, Ahura? Uh, let's just say. Someone pass me some tea because it's getting spilled. <laughs> Season one All Stars Internationals has already happened. Already happened. But um, season two All Stars Internationals is also coming. So let's just see what's happening, yeah? I've got chills. <laughs> I think everyone in the room, like you heard, like sorry guys on the podcast that can't see what's going on right now. Everyone, I've got producers like this, like ex with excitement. Everyone is so excited. Well, a horror. I'm ready. We're ready. 
Everyone in the room's ready. The nation is ready. The world, sorry, it's international, baby, is ready for this. Don't get ready. Stay ready. Stay ready, queens. <laughs> we're going to do this. Oh, my God. That is so, so exciting. We're going to talk about that a little bit later on. But I wondered, we've, we've spoke about your drag name. Now, I've been excited for this all day. I wondered whether you could name me on the podcast a drag name. What would my drag name be? What could my drag name be? Well, what? who do you see yourself as? What's your brand? What's your She's look? five foot What's your two. Aesthetic? Five foot two. Right. Bit, of a, bit of a Rottweiler and a Chihuahua's body. So quite loud, but I'm really small. So something on that. Um, she's definitely not, yeah, she's definitely not quite. Speaks her mind, outspoken. Guys in the producer's room, okay. anyone want to help me out here? Come on, Lucy, you can help us out here. What What else is my brand? She's short, she's loud. I'm not really selling myself very well here. Is she, so she's she's a strong woman. She's strong. She's definitely strong. But she's, she, but she's a biter and controversial. I think we should call you. I think we should call you Margaret Snatcher. Margaret Snatcher! <laughs> no, I am living for that, everyone, guys. Right, I'm just going to reintroduce myself, guys. It's no longer Natalie O'Leary on the podcast. It's Margaret Snatcher and I'm going to snatch you up. <laughs> oh my God, I don't know where this is coming from. Oh, I'm obsessed, babes. We've made, this is a moment for me. Thank you so much. I gave you quite a hard task there. You don't know a lot about me. You took it, you ran with it. And now I'm a snatcher, honey, coming for your man. Okay, she look, is. wow. So, look how much more like confident you get with that name. I'm obsessed. <laughs> no, <laughs> Margaret Snatch is going to take you on to the next challenge. So it is, of course, the sewing challenge. So you're the oh. queen. Bow, 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 bow. Bow, bow, bow. You are the queen of creating looks, Ahura. So tell us about your time on RuPaul's. What was your favorite look to create during your time? I mean, I just, what, out of the whole of the runways I ever did? Or Everything. the sewing challenges? Everything. Okay. So in terms of the looks I brought, I the one I loved the most was obviously my finale gown, which I designed, which was all about asymmetricality and having mm. no balance. But um, I loved doing the um, prehistoric runway because I worked with this really cool designer who makes who three D prints everything, mm. and we literally was in prep. We were scanning my body in in prep, in we prep, prep. <laughs> just with a coffee. Um, just making it work, you know? Mm. And I was like, I, I think I had to like, like the money he wanted was a lot. So like back then obviously I was, I had no money. So I was like, I remember like really, really having to like graft and like just work mm. anything I could to just get the money to afford it. But like, I remember investing everything into that look and thinking it was like the dog's bollocks. It was. So yeah. And also like, as well, like it was the first time I'd ever gone down the way like completely naked. Mm. Um, and I made this fur coat, what was like 12 foot long with a big bear on the back. Like, yeah, it was just everything for me. Like, it was everything I could imagine for prehistoric. Like, if I was a cave woman, you know, roaming the roaming the pits, roaming the rocks, <laughs> that would be what I would wear. So I was, I was obsessed with it. How did you actually move? Like, it was incredible. Like, the detail, honestly, was just outstanding. But how did you actually, I mean, you killed that runway, girl. You walked amazingly. But how did you actually manage to do that without well, breaking a I bone? Was like, I was like, the thing is, it's so hot on that stage. So mm. I had taped my PP really yes. far back because obviously I, had to, I was completely naked. Oh but yeah. I remember like as I was walking in the sweat. I remember like I could feel the tape undoing. That's why I said like I can't. If I'm in the bottom for a lip sync, I cannot perform. You genuinely meant it's not going to happen, like, guys. No, I was like the BBC <laughs> is literally going to have to blame me because something's going to flop out and. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what kind of channel we're going to stream this on, but Babe Station, hi, how you doing? <laughs> but yeah, it was it was not the one. But that's where I was like, it's like I remember walking, like clenching my legs together quite tight as I walked and moved my hip to hold it back, just in case. And what was probably happening there is clenching your legs together, you're probably causing more friction, more heat, and yeah, in, in result, sweat. sweating even more. Oh my God. But you killed it. You'd have never known. You'd have never known, babes. No, she's a professional hoe. She knows what she's doing. She knows what she's doing. And talk to us, Ahura, about that Gay Times cover because, oh my God, iconic. Everything about it. How camp. I mean, it's it's crazy as well because I'm like the first ever Rue girl to be on the cover, like UK Rue girl. Incredible. So on the cover of Gay Times. And yet I came fifth. Like I didn't even win. So like it was insane to 
have that opportunity given mm. to me. Um, but also, like, the concept, the styling, like, everything was just so great. Like, um, it was just so surreal. Like, also, like, it was, we used so much, like, futuristic t- technology. Like, we scanned myself with a 3D scanner I saw scanner that well. on your Instagram. Yeah, that looked so good. Yeah. Tell me. And um, they basically did, like, a whole photo shoot where I wasn't even present. Like, with, like, a hologram of me. Like, basically, yeah. So, like, it was insane. Like, I was still there for, like, most of the shoot. Like, a whole day, like 10 looks. And then we did an additional five where I wasn't even present. Technology, mind blowing. Technology, <laughs> babies. Is that, you can see my, my jaw is literally on the floor. That must be so amazing for you because you're obviously such a creative person to go into that scenario. And like, how much kind of like involvement did you have on the shoot? Did you get to kind of put your ideas across? Well, it was like, we there was like a GCDC look they gave me. Like yeah. a blue, like leather. Loved that I, it. We didn't end up using the shot, but like, it was just a bodice. And then it was like, oh, you need to put the leggings on. I was like, can we just take the trouser leg, wrap it around my leg, put it under my arm, the other one, and wrap that around my arm and make like an asymmetrical sleeve, like neck piece. They were like, sure. So I did it. And then they were like, this looks great. And like, the photos looked really cool. It like like a really weird silhouette. Mm. But it was just leggings. It's like, um, but I do that quite a lot. Like with trousers, I tend to wear it as like a scarf or like a a, a necktie, like, because you can do it. So I do it like like a lot of times if I find like a really cute blazer with a pair of fitted trousers, I'll make it into like a neck. <laughs> I'm just thinking, I need <laughs> a horror a to come, I need a horror to come to PLT and just dress me, please. Because honestly, I'm just thinking like, your brain is so incredible to just go into that situation and think that. I'd just be like, yeah, throw them on me, hun, like whatever. And honestly, and that, that was something obviously we loved about you on RuPaul's is how creative and obviously fashion you are. You are the fashion queen. And I know that you spoke in the article about wanting to really fuck the fashion industry up. So for anyone who's not read the article, tell us a little bit about that and kind of what you meant by it. Well, it's just like fashion is orchestrated with so many rules. And it's just Mm. like, there's so many do's and don'ts and don't wear this color this spring and blah, blah. I'm just like, just fuck the system. Like, and like also like, don't like like me like i was a guy like i was shopping mm. on plt for actually boy clothes like just like rupaul says like don't fuck it up i literally came there to fuck it up like just to change what it's all about trying yeah. to just switch things on its head because the thing is we're so used to everything being the way it is mm-hmm. so m- make make a change make things a bit different so just just like i always say if you have an idea or you think of an outfit that idea you have for your outfit scrap it the next 10, scrap. The la- the 11th outfit you think of wearing, that's the one you should go out in because that's the last thing you'd have thought to wear and that's the last thing anybody else would have gone out in. So that means no one else will look the same. Do you know what? I'm going to take this advice. The next time I go out this weekend, I'm going to be I'm going to be there with my 10 outfits and be like, no, I'm going to scrap them all. Yeah. That's what we do. If you if you, sit, if you think to yourself, like, oh, I've got a night on Friday, I think I'm going to wear like, just, maybe just like a little, you know, leather jacket and some jeans. Like, like in your comfort no. zone. Yeah, just, then just stop and go, no. Okay, so what that, what that I do? Well, I've got a cute little red dress. No. Just keep, <laughs> keep going. going. And, then the <laughs> and then when you get to the 10th idea... <laughs> The one after that is the one. That's the one, guys. Everyone go for the eleventh outfit. Okay, is everyone? Gonna, is everyone gonna, I think we should all try that and see what we end up like. Okay, I'm going to tag you in the pictures and just let you know that it was definitely your kind of outfit there, hon. You you inspired That's my it. My fashion do's and don'ts. Do's there and don'ts, go. honey. And I know that you spoke about when you were kind of working in fashion, you didn't feel like there was much opportunity as a drag queen to to continue working. Like, tell us a little bit about that. Um. It was like, when I graduated and I was obviously not doing drag, like mm. I was working and interning with so many big brands and mm. uh, doing so many shows. But then as soon as I started to build a profile up in London as a drag queen, it was kind of like brands didn't want me to work for them because they people knew who I was as a colleague, like out of work. Mm. So they felt like it was kind of almost jeopardizing to the brands or like, you know, so I already had a profile and like, mm. the association with, with the brand with that could look bad on them. So I've work became a lot harder and internships and stuff became mm. a lot harder as soon as I was a, a figure in my community. In Which makes sense. no sense whatsoever. Yeah, because also these brands, this is the issue. So, so many brands, like big brands, like names, I'm not going to name names, but are very quick to, you know, plagiarize and platform, mm. you know, mm. queer people yeah. and queens and uh, you know queer artists of all different forms 
but they're very not quick to actually recruit them. Mm. So they like the idea of them modeling in their campaigns yeah. and their shows, but to actually have them working behind the brand, different story. Well, then it may, then it makes no sense that you can't you can't do one without the other, can you? Exactly. So, like, why not actually have a queer input rather than just a queer image? One hundred percent. And I mean, like, on that note, of course, we mentioned before it's it's Pride Month. We're coming to an end of Pride Month. I can't believe. Like, how are we going into July? How are we going? Girl, into I'm, July? I'm not. I've not even dipped my toe in the pool. I've not done anything yet. <laughs> we haven't like, left the UK. I mean, literally, we're not even drinking of Aperol. I'm, you know, like this is too soon. We need to rewind. I'm a fur coat and a shawl and I'm going to be going, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like, this is too quick. It is too quick. It is too quick. I'm not here for it. Like, if it was the, if we weren't in the UK, we could just lie and like go back a few months, but it's going to be freezing before we know it, honey. Let's be honest. Literally. (laughs) It's like a quick sash and he's pulled out too soon. And I'm just like, we're not ready yet. Which no, nobody's here for it, hon. Nobody's here for it. (laughs) On that note, Ahura, it's, of course, Pride Month. Well, we're coming to the end of Pride Month, but happy Pride. Happy Pride, baby. Oh, babes, how have you been celebrating? What's been going on? Not a lot. I mean, the football's coming the way. Kind of cock-blocked the whole sesh. Cock-blocked the whole event. It It is what it is. But no, it's, I've just been, you know, doing my thing, um, making it work. But, like, it's just been a lot of, like, you know, social posts. Mm few instagram moments you know but yeah i mean just enjoying with my friends like we just it's pride I, like i was out doing trans pride the other day um doing the march and the protests and stuff Amazing. And just there for the speeches show my support but there's not been really a lot for the for the gays mm, there's but, no parties uh, hun i know but we can't party and the gays like to party so i, exactly. I, think, I think we're gonna i think the gays have gone into waiting and we're gonna just <laughs> do it in a few months time so i'll celebrate in style then. oh i sincerely hope so hon i sincerely hope so but what does pride really mean to you ahora i mean to me pride is just about what it says in the name having mm. pride like it, it doesn't matter if you're gay straight lesbian trans whatever you are or even if you're straight like as long as you're proud of who you are mm. And you're down for a good time, and you're accepting of one another. Yeah. Then come along, have a drink, have a baby, get yourself out there, and just celebrate your own individuality and being who you are. Yes. And I think that's what pride should be about. It's not. It's just about celebrating your own happiness in mm. yourself. It don't matter who you are, what you are. Just take the day off and just party and be, and be like, you know what, this one's for me. Like it's just a time to stop and just celebrate yourself yeah that's what pride is for me just owning who you are lo- and loving who you are you do you honey always exactly. you do you, you, that's do you. Pride. definitely and if there are any festivals going ahead this year will you be partying what are you attending tell us what's your calendar looking like honey we're fully booked so but you know we've busy. got we've got the mardi gras in australia we're going to uh mighty hoopla uh, we're doing the main stage at London Pride. We're doing the main stage yes. at Manchester Pride. But the girls are out there. The United King dolls are, t- are taking over one day at a time, you know? I mean, the United King dolls, honey, let's just talk about it. <laughs> I am obsessed with you, babes. You smashed it into the UK charts with UK Horn. I mean, how did it feel coming out of RuPaul's and then d- to do that? Like, what an achievement. Like... We obviously heard the track on the show, like what we had to write lyrics to. So when we first heard it, I was like, what is this Teletubbies on acid (laughs) shit? I was like, this is never going to be a number one hit. This is actual bullshit. (laughs) This is, I was like, this is just them trying to mug me off and make me like an absolute cunt on stage. I was like, who the fuck wrote Bing Bang Bong, Sing Sang Song, Ding Dang Dong, UK Hun? Like, it's just like trash. So I was just like, I was like, so obviously we've got to write the chorus then. They said, no, no, they're the lyrics. I went, <laughs> Bing, I was like, what? who wrote this crazy frog? <laughs> so I was just like over it. So I was like, you're okay, we'll just do it. Because, you know, <laughs> it's drag and all. Um, so we did it. And then, obviously, when it came out, I was like, oh, God, here we go. Is this that week's episode. <laughs> and it just blew up. And then the next day, I'm like, why have I got, like, 9,764, like, story mentions? 
<laughs> why is my Twitter trending? Like, what is going on? It was just like insane. Like the reaction was just unreal. Like it just blew up overnight. And I was like, and then like within an hour, it was like number three in the iTunes chart. Then it went down to like Mental. number one in the iTunes chart. Then it was like number 49 as a new entry in the official UK charts within like 24 hours. And then the official Sunday charts come along. It's like, the United Kingdoms take place as number three in the official UK chart. I was like, oh what the... God. And we literally knocked like Sam Smith out of the way. And I was like, what the <laughs> see, fuck? See you, hon. See you later, Sam. I was Next like, time. Sam Smith, are you okay, hon? <laughs> Honestly, I love the fact that you were literally just like, yeah, I fucking hated it, but look how well it did. And like, honestly, like that song haunts me. Like anywhere I go, if someone goes, mm. thing, bang, bang, you go, <laughs> fuck off. Fuck <laughs> off, fuck. We've literally, we've been singing it all like literally day before this podcast. We've been sat in the room, like getting in the mood, like, yeah, bing, bang, bang. It's just insane. Like it was just, <laughs> like, it was like men, pe- mental tra- traumatizing. Like people just could not get it out of their head. Everywhere you went, it was being played. I went to a restaurant, they brought me a cocktail called the UK Horn. No. Like it was just unreal. Like Horn. could not escape it. Anywhere I went, like I'd go to bed and I'd be like, Bing bang bong, sing sang song. What is going on? <laughs> what is going on? Like, You're going to do it tonight after this. The worst was like, so I'm on like, you know, the grinder back in the day. And I'm just like <laughs> yeah. scrolling through and someone's like, ding dang dong, how's your schlong? Fancy a bing bang bong. And I'm like, hold up. I'm here for a good time. Not for a VIP concert. So you better sort this out, mama. <laughs> Mother. <laughs> Mother. Oh my God, that is actually hilarious. Do you know what? I actually quite like the enthusiasm of that person coming up with that. I mean, do you know what? Hats off. Too much time. <laughs> Too much time. Where's your mom? How's your mom? You know? How's your cousin? Maybe checking on the family. <laughs> Honestly, I actually can't, but she's a pop star. She's a pop star now. And I'm, I'm, I mean, you're I'm going basically on Mariah talk. Carey. Murray, who? Who's like any more? We've got a horror. We've got we've we've got the United Kingdoms. Like at the end of the day, that's all I'm here for. Exactly. So what's what's the tour? What's going on? How excited are you for the tour? Because that is incredible. We're so excited yeah. for it. We're coming. We're coming to a show for sure. Yeah, we had a world. We got a world tour with the United Kingdoms, which is sold out, and also the official Drag Race UK season two tour sold out. So insane. Just in, insane reaction. I remember like the tickets sold did like a record history. Like they sold out within like. Four hours, which has never wow. happened for a drag show. So, and like it crashed the website. So people love it. So it was great. So I'm really excited. We're doing we're doing like a Canada tour. We're doing a new a, a um, American tour. Wow. Uh, so yeah, Australia. Uh, going all over, girl. You know, spreading like a rash. She's global, spreading like a rash. Yeah. <laughs> but it must be amazing. This is the thing. It must be amazing to know that, like, literally, you guys are so loved, and you, Ahura, you're so loved by so many people. They're coming. They're selling out your tours. Here's me saying, I'm coming. The tickets bloody sold out. You, we better <laughs> somebody at PLT better hook us up here, getting us in a front row somewhere. Come on. Um. But yeah, you know, you guys are doing so well. It's incredible. Like the fandom is insane, really, isn't it? Yeah. It, I mean. I remember when, before we did the show, the the guy who, like, does the mental checks and stuff on you was saying mm. to me, was like to me when, when, I hope you're prepared for this. And I was like, what do you mean? He was like, two shows change your life. Love Island and Drag Race. Mm. And I was like, shut up. I'm not fucking Molly <laughs> May as much as I like to think I am. <laughs> um, I was like, whatever, like, it's Drag Race. Like, I'll probably get, you know, a few people in the street. But no, like, it blew the fuck off. Mm. Like, it was just insane. So... Um, never, never imagined it. But like, I don't think, I don't think anyone was prepared for it. So it's just been insane. Like, just yeah, the the fandom is it is great, but it's also does mm. have its downside. You know, because the fans are just so obsessed and so invested. Mm. There's also a lot of hate what comes with that, and yeah, um, a lot of trolling. Like, I think the trolling for Drag Race is probably one of the worst there is for any fan base. Mm. So it was it's hard. I remember like for the first few weeks of the show, it well, was that's it when it was actually me. on. Yeah, yeah, like the first three weeks was brutal, but the um as I as as my arc changed in this series because mm. I was the villain at the start, mm. as it changed, then you know um it became a lot more supportive of me. Oh, but... you were loved. You were loved. You are loved. Like honestly, I think that the you know that season 
obviously the beginning you were kind of painted out to be this kind of character the, the villain type and you know you played up to it and we bloody loved it I mean I loved it but then literally you just blossomed and I think everyone just completely fell in love with you in a horror like oh, what a dream to watch like honestly to watch your journey as well has just been incredible and like what you're doing now is insane and I just can't wait to see what even this year is going to bring because like you say you're just blowing up. And I mean, we're here for it, babes. We're cheers. We're cheers into you. I mean, yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we're signed as models. Like, you know, I'm a male model and a Checklist. female model. Check. You know. Check, honey. Little Mix music video. Check. Wait. Little Mix music video. That was my next point, actually. Confetti. Tell me about... I need to know everything. Start to bottom. It everything. It was just crazy. It was like, you know, wow. we need you to be up tomorrow at 6am to be on set for 10 because you're going to be dancing with Little Mix. And I was like... Sorry, who me like this? <laughs> me. <laughs> um, I was like, sure, okay. So you know, it was great because like the girls were in, you know, the the boy drag. Mm, they um, looked amazing. Looked they insane. Looked so like you know, we're all there, you know, dancing and jamming out, and they're there, you know, with their hands down the crotch, you know. Fuck, oh, in the toilet, in the bathroom, you know, having fuck, it, having a way, you know, masking it out. Absolutely so, loved it. It was so calm. So it was great to see the girls, you know, embrace a bit of our side a little bit and 100%. cross over for the day. So it was so fun. But yeah, I mean, what what an, what an opportunity, you know. What an opportunity. You looked amazing. Like the oh, look was incredible. Like, you know, neon green, like Mr. Grinch. Oh yeah, always bring it. Look a bit hair, of Grinch vibes. All, all, all the jewels. It was. It was so camp. It was such a great. Always day. big hair. Always. always. Big hair. <laughs> but it's fair to say that that you know, drag race has really changed your life, hasn't it? Oh god, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm moving out, get my own place. Like this doesn't Dad! happen. Yeah. So like, tell us, tell us. Well, so yeah, it's I mean like it's, it's just just life changing. Mm, you know, like mm. I remember, like you know, a drag gig to me was you know. 120 pounds for like five hours work like and that, mm. that felt like good money and you know yeah. it's just um i just never never thought i'd be in this position i never thought you know i'd be able to do the things i've done um, and also be able to give back to the people who've helped me like you know it's it's so great like i've got a nephew like it's so nice that i can you know buy things mm. for him and and you know not and like money not be such a worry like i remember like yeah. buying a pret felt like a day out for me mm. it was like you know Seven pound for a meal deal. Woo-hoo. I mean, it's not it's just, not the cheapest coffee like, little stuff. You know what I mean, I was actually like, exploiting today. <laughs> just someone better hold Bougie. her back. <laughs> I was like, do I get a cookie? Whoa. But yeah, you know, but now it's like, you know what? I go to print. I'm like, ginger shot, coffee, latte. Oh, the whole shebang. I'll, like, I'll, I'll take the like, shelf. Yeah, I'll I'm take like, the I'm shelf. Like Harry Potter. I go. I'll take the trolley. I'll take the lot. <laughs> <laughs> good treat yourself you deserve it you literally deserve it so so much i'm so glad to hear that thank you it's and been, so, it's been a journey <laughs> oh a ju- i mean and we're here for it we're here for it and it's, it's been great to watch and like i say i can't wait to continue watching like you grow and just shine like the star you are honey oh thank you so how did it feel when drag race came to an end because let me just say i mean when it was when it was your time to go well it wasn't your time in my eyes I was not ready for that I was like what like honestly seriously not ready and I know that the nation you know felt like that also you know not not against taste not against taste because I think that was such a hard um moment for the both of you obviously you've got such a special friendship and for that like I couldn't even imagine being in either of your shoes so you were both fantastic but I was not ready for you to go is what I'm saying so how did it feel when it was your time to sashay away I mean, it was, I didn't feel like it was my time. I didn't feel like it was the right Mm-mm. decision. I mean, I I was pretty certain it was a double save. I think most of us were pretty certain it's going to be that. I know. And, I, and I remember like coming back for the finale and then be like, and I seen Ellie Diamond was there and I was like, wait, why is she still here? I swear there's been another episode. And then they were like, <laughs> it was a double save. And I was like, Hold up, hold up, <laughs> give me a minute, you get me a margarita, hold up, what the fuck is going on? And I was, I was, I was like, how, how is this happened? But you know what? It created great TV. Mm-hmm. It was a gaggy mm-hmm. moment. The gays love a controversial exit. Oh, yeah. So you know what? I fed the children. I popped the corn <laughs> and I fed the children. We gave the content. <laughs> and it's always great to leave them wanting more than to be oh, in the yeah. fridge Pass your Excel back that day, you know, best before and all that. You know, I'd rather do it that way than be a tea or coffee, you know? <laughs> the shit. Yes. 
<laughs> so, I'm living for it. Babes, well, like I say, we we missed you. I, I really wasn't ready for you to go. But again, that's it. You walked away. And honey, look how you shone when you did. Yeah, I mean, I think that's probably as well why my reaction has probably been so good. Because I think mm. people, you know, w- really were rooting for me. So I think oh, yeah. having people's support has probably got me where I am now. So, you know, I'm so thankful for all the people behind me was, you know, screaming my name and calling for me to come back. But, you know, yes. she's now, like I said, she's, you know, the, the top name next to Got Mick for All Stars. So let's just Honey, see what happens, baby. Let's just, I can't wait. Honestly, I can't wait. Now, but whilst, whilst we're spilling tea, I need to know, are there any big secrets you can tell us about Drag Race that nobody knows? And I mean nobody or horror. No other interview. No other room. Like, I want actual tea. I know you can give it me. I mean, there's not a lot we can say because obviously <laughs> I'm on a contract. contract. <laughs> but what I will say is um, RuPaul doesn't believe in sweating. So everything in the whole studio, the runway, everything is like minus degrees. Stop. Wait. So, so, like, when, so you, she... you, when you open a freezer door, imagine that. Oh my god, Nippon Central. That's why like if you look in the background sometimes <laughs> when we're not on camera, like you'll see like tastes when I'm having a conversation, you'll see me in the background with like two dressing gowns on, like just sh- yeah. walking around. If you just look closely throughout no, the I season, actually, you'll, it's weird you'll that you say taste because I actually things. remember him. I actually remember Taste doing that. Like you'll, if you watch that. like throughout the, you can see like the people like wearing fur coats or people <gasps> like wearing layers or like or like you'll sometimes see like when we're on, like, when we're like, on the runways, we're shaking because we're shivering. Or you'll see like one of them, on one of them, like my eye makeup starts running because you need that cold your eyes water. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna go back and watch it all over again because I li- I literally could like watch that show all over again and I'm gonna go back and notice those moments. But no, I literally noticed taste. Like, I remember her wearing those dressing gowns and being like walking around, yeah. and I remember thinking that would be me. But wow, doesn't believe in sweat. I mean, so bougie. Yeah, we don't swear. I feel like we 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 might need to get that rule in this room. It's very hot in this room. That might be a new rule, <laughs> <It's> guys. Criminal. <laughs> criminal. Um, no, that that's a good little uh, thing to know there. I didn't know that. I feel like we'll take that on. Yeah, a, a little, little insider. A little, little bit of an exclusive. Now, one of the other things, I was going to go on to the, um, the international RuPaul All-Stars, but I feel like we've definitely, I feel like even just then we got a little bit of a moment then. She's, she's on a contract, honey, so we'll just wait. Let's we'll just, just let's just wait and see what happens, you know. Let's let's just hustle and bustle. Let's just, you know. We'll just wait at the TV. Remote's at the ready. We're going to be ready for you. Just see what happens. But, I mean, <laughs> there's lots more other shows and Drag Race coming out. So, yes. it's going to be camp. It's a camp year. You know, we've got lots what, of fun things coming up. What more can we look forward to? Is there anything you can talk about, horror? Well, I, I'm doing another series. But it's a very different direction for myself. Stop. Um, a little MTV contract. But, Wait! Um, I love MTV. Tell us. Tell I us, can't tell, us. tell you a ah! lot. But I'm going to be going away. Um, but then we have... Um, what else have we got? Music with the United King Dolls. Love. Love. Um, more magazine editorials coming out soon. Mm. She's um, editorial. We are obsessed. I think... Taste in me, maybe goggle box. No, like oh my god, <laughs> like someone's just gasped in the production. Lucy, just, guys, has just gasped. She's just, got a, to... <gasps> just, <laughs> just, <laughs> just a few things I think are in the works. So let's just Woo! wait and see. It's going to be a camp old year. So. A camp old year, and we are here for it. We are living for it. We'll look out for that, babes. Good luck with everything. We know you're going to shine. I can't wait for, to watch on goggle box. One of my favorite shows. Camp, right? So camp. I am so ready. Now, one of the things, this is a big one. I asked you to give me a drag name in the beginning. You smashed that challenge. But one of the one of the mini challenges we really loved in RuPaul's was the reading challenge. Do you remember right. with your 3D, 3D glasses? <laughs> yeah, Ahura is looking oh, yeah. slightly nervous now. So I don't know why I do this to myself. Well, I don't know why the producers do this to me, but do you think you could read me, Ahura? The library is open. I mean, babe, I, I, I honestly could never read you because that would just be offensive. I mean, if I was to ever read you, it'd probably just be as offensive as you coming into this podcast with that fucking outfit on, <laughs> wouldn't it? So, 
with your hair slicked back thinking you're fucking Lara Croft. I think I think I've had enough. I could never read you, babe. Never. <laughs> you know that exposed overlock scene. We've seen it before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taken back. <laughs> that is that is a fucking skill. I could not do that. Like genuinely, when you were like, I could never. I was like, yeah. She's actually saying she could never. And then I got I got murdered, slain <laughs> on the podcast. I, I I I'm speechless, guys. But that no. I, we need another one. I need another round of applause. <laughs> one more. One more. Come on, yeah. Where's the energy, guys? Shit, that was good. <laughs> Oh, geez, right. I'm just going to um, pump, I'm, I'm just going to go and change yeah, you, for the you next. Go the next. <laughs> no, that was amazing. That was amazing. Now, Ahura, before you do go, thank you so much for that. I mean, I feel like I definitely shouldn't be saying thank you, but I'm going to say thank you. <laughs> no, that was that was fantastic. Now, before you do go, we have got a little game for you, and this is just a real quick fire game. I've got Fab. a little cue card here. How Ooh. cute is she behind closed doors? Um, this is a really fun game. So this is called Most Likely To. Okay. I'm going to hit you with some quick little scenarios and I just need you to answer the first person that pops into your head. What? Is it like Drag Race Girls? Mm, okay, mm-hmm. so my cast. Yeah. Oh okay. yeah, the cast. The okay, cast from cool. Drag Race. So the person who was would most likely, and then I'll read you the scenario. Okay. Guys, this is going to be fun. Here's another little bit of tea to end the podcast, which I don't even want it to end. I could stay on here forever. Let's go for it. You ready? Go for it. Okay, most likely to help you if you're in trouble. Bimini. Throw you under the bus. Lawrence Chain. No, Ellie Diamond. Ellie Diamond. I was surprised at Lawrence Chain. Ellie Diamond it is. Steal your wigs. Sister, sister. (laughs) I agree with that one. (laughs) Throw shade during a drag race challenge. Uh, Lawrence Chaney. Hmm, I know this one. Copy your outfit. Sister, sister. Sister, sister, honey, it was always going to come. A horror. This has been the highlight of my year, the highlight of the PLT podcast. I have had so, so much fun. I've got tears in the production crew from my <laughs> roast that I just got back then. <laughs> Honestly, you've been a dream. Thank you so, so much for coming on the podcast, girl. No, thank you. It's been a ball. And I oh, it's been a ball. We'll uh, see you out in Soho on that little sash and we'll get on it, baby. Babes, we are going to call you up. The next time in, I'm in London, I'm calling you up, babes, and you need to take us out on the oh, town because I know it's going to be a wild old sesh. It's going to be camp. Camp is oh, It's going to be so camp. I can't wait. Well, thank you so, so much. I hope you have an amazing rest of the summer. Thank when you. winter comes, everything. Good luck with everything that you're doing. Like I say, you're going to kill everything. And thank you from everyone here at PLT. We love you so much, Ahura. Thank you, PLT. You've served me well, and I'll serve you again. Thank you. See you later, babes. And thank you so much to everybody for listening. This has been the amazing Ahura on the PLT podcast. We will see you next week. <laughs>